check, check, check. Check one, two. All right, dude. All right, man. Just me and you. Here it is. How you doing? Good. So. So. You've been watching. Where are we? Okay. All right. You've been watching. Okay. Uh, in three, two, one. Welcome to Quitting Weed. Number whatever. I am Michael Lyons. This is Frankie Graves. Ah, what's you? Today we're talking about marijuana and the dangers it faces, it presents to society and to families yeah. and a scourge. No, this is stupid. Take okay. two. <laughs> what are we going to talk about? <laughs> we should have a topic. Um, it doesn't have to be weed, but weeds are, weed stories are funny. Yeah, weed stories are funny. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll is being taken up. Something we both understand. We don't have to get super deep. They're just meeting us. Yeah. So I'm not going to ask about the time your dad put his finger in your ass. No, not yet. <laughs> it's too soon. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's uh, finale. Let's just talk about that's weed. That's finale shit, man. <laughs> that's finale shit, man. Come on, man. <laughs> okay, still recording. All right. Take three. We'll just talk about weed. You and I are the modern Cheech and Chong. All right, cool. Take three. Welcome to Quitting Weed. I am Michael Lyons. Today I have Frankie Graves with me. Hey, what's up? Frankie, do you want to get high? Sure. All right. I didn't think you were going to say hi. Oh, we are, we're not prepared. We are not. We are unprepared. So this is, uh, this is fitting. I remember if I found it really strange the first time I saw Joe Rogan smoke pot on camera. Yeah. Because in TV, you can't smoke smoke pot or you can't even smoke a cigarette in tv i don't think anymore oh they can't show um well movies have drinking but there's censorship on tv about marijuana and, and i think right. cigarettes you never see anybody smoke on tv anymore no there, there's a big spin you know they don't want to promote it they don't want you know the whole you know so there's been the whole change and everything as we yeah. see all the time so um, do you have any friends growing. who don't who don't smoke pot oh uh, yeah i do i actually have a lot really yeah for being like a a, a known pot how can you stand hanging out with them? <laughs> you know what i can because they don't want to smoke anything i got so then my shit lasts yeah that's a good point well you know well you know i traveling around from from state to state you know with all of my buddies you know going to this powwow and that powwow they didn't smoke and as as a pothead you're like all right cool you know you're not supporting anybody you know it used to annoy me i had a friend i'm not friends with anymore not because of this but oh. um he smoked occasionally but he would treat it like i he would never get he would never smoke around me Okay. And the last time we talked, he uh, was going to go out in the woods and get some chaga tea or something. Asked oh. me if I wanted to come with. I went, yeah, that'd be great. But I want you to smoke weed with me when we're out there. You know, it's fun to be out in the woods high. He goes, well, I got to drive home. Went, what do you think it's going to do to you? And, but he was just steadfast. He was, couldn't, he treated it like he was going to be doing mushrooms or acid or something. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I have a friend that quit smoking weed, and then when he said he started back up again, it flipped him out, and he couldn't. Oh, he just lost all his tolerance and yeah, turned and him the, into... Yeah, it, and he's like, for real, bro, he goes, I even tried, like, starting slow with, like, you know, but every time he said I'd even a little one Really? Yeah, it would just send him into, like, all of this. And he was a regular pot smoker before? Yeah, he was huh. a regular pot smoker before, but he quit for, I don't know how many years, but it was years, a yeah. long time. And then he said he came back to get back into it, and he said it was just totally different. You yeah. know, I wonder if the new weed, maybe he was reacting against something that's in, because weed's different now when it was was when i started smoking. he did say when he quit it was still the the brick stuff the you know the yeah. old school yeah just yeah. just weed yeah now who knows what's in it i think there's chemicals and stuff so yeah we because like this you know uh <laughs> my dealer you know him what? dwight 
you grew this. So this is no, he doesn't even grow it. He, every time, it's the same thing. He goes, oh, this is good stuff. This is lemon mango. And I'm like, the fact that it smells like Febreze doesn't make a good weed. <laughs> just give me the crap. And I just, yeah. this last time, I was like, do you have any weed smelling weed? Yeah. I'm not looking for a mentholated, you know. Yeah, I think... I think the the names are just ridiculous. They're just coming up. It doesn't name. help sell. I have no choice. No. You could call no. it dog shit, and I'd be like, okay, <laughs> how much? Thank you for this bag of dog shit. <laughs> and then everyone had God's breath, and they thought it was just the. Oh, oh yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, all right. God's okay. breath. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what dog breath? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking smoke some dog breath. <laughs> But, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing, the shift, the change, the growth, um, the whole entire thing of it, you know. It just got mainstreamed. And yeah. Um, I'm cool with weed getting mainstreamed. I'm a little suspicious. Yeah. But I've, uh, do I want to talk about this? Yeah, who cares? Yeah. I've quit watching porn. Yeah. Um, because that I watch get mainstreamed at the same time as weed. People aren't embarrassed about it. And there's no judgment against people who are porn stars and stuff. Okay. And I don't think it was good for me. Um, and as a society, I think it's turned us. We've just become these weirdos. Mm. When I was a kid, no, I mean, there, you know, my dad had a collection of Playboys or whatever, okay. and there were yeah. dirty movies, but it was a taboo. Yeah, it wasn't now, every guy. Yeah. It was always either that one older cousin. Or the, like you said, the uncle that, you know, didn't have the family, you know, or, or I, I'm not trying to say that was why, but I'm just saying, <laughs> um, because he had more dang free time on his hands, you know? <laughs> Too much free time. Yeah, but it wasn't like how it is today where every, like, every seven out of ten people are on some kind of device, you know, with their phone, you know, peeping it out late at night alone or whatever. Yeah. You know, like back in the 90s, it was just kind of like, oh, my cousin, he has a stash of porns. But you didn't make it a point to go over there every time. You yeah, it would be a business. once and a big thing. Yeah. Now people, it's before they go to work, it's when they come home. It's... So quitting weed is turning into quitting porn? Well, no, I mean, it's it's the uh, just the fact that they've both been like mainstreamed and accepted by society. Oh, okay, that, I forgot the point you're making. Yeah. My bad, it, see. When I was a kid... You know, porn was bad and all that was bad and weed was bad. Now, and people are just casual. I mean, the president of the United States would probably make jokes about beating off. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is growth, you know, growth here and or there. Degradation. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> uh, the shit that I, that I get kind of funky about is like, I got friends that sat years in states now that are selling the shit. Oh, and, that's not messed and, up? Yeah, and like in 2003, I had a good friend. Um, he didn't he didn't sell it. <laughs> but because he was always on the trail for so long, he traveled with two ounces. Mm -hmm. You know, and he didn't sell it. You know, but he was always on the trail. And who cares if he did? Yeah, and then so did he get he gets but, caught yeah. in North Dakota, which was at, a t at the time a no-tolerance place yeah and two ounces man he sat a lot of years in prison that sucks didn't have a record didn't have any kind of he wasn't you know he was a cool cool dude you know and he just went straight to prison yeah and then now they're a legal state that sells it and so yeah i don't want <laughs> to forget kind of mind <laughs> i don't want to forget anymore like uh because people you know if i had ever gotten arrested for weed my family members who don't smoke would have kind of went, well, you know, they would have agreed with it, kind of thought, well, it's probably maybe the best thing for him. They would have seen my being a pot smoker as, you know, he's got a drug problem. Okay, yeah. And because society's painted weed a certain way, that would have been their reaction. Right. Now they would flip and nobody has a problem I can smoke weed on the internet and apply for a job next week at a school and the person, if they saw it, wouldn't hold it against me. No. But, uh, opposed to five years ago, five years ago. Yeah. Yeah. You would have been shit canned. Um, Winona, uh, LaDuke, 
ha uh, starting or has started a hemp farm or something. She was getting in on the legalized weed early on. Oh, okay. And so now there's a lot of like activist Indian people who are pro weed. Okay. But like, where were you guys before the government told you it was okay? Um, mm. You know, with yeah. all these signs and the no tolerance. I mean, there's Indian people who are also supporting that was no tolerance rules and all that kind of stuff. Hmm. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm still a little butthurt about the anti-drug people growing up and just how, like the war on drugs. I was mentioning this the other day. And how the casualty was uh, uh, honesty and relationships. Right. Yeah, I get you it. You know, I've, I had to go in the closet like a gay person just because I, I wanted to smoke a little weed. Right. I wasn't living a lifestyle that anybody could judge harshly. And screw them if they wanted to judge it harshly. But when I was an alcoholic, there was no, I didn't have to hide it. I could tell people, yeah, I'm going to the bar tonight. Whatever. Right. You know, that's fine. You you know, he's well, he's doing good. He's in college. He's got a job. Right. Yeah. And you know, I was also drinking three or four beers it's every like day. Double standard. Yeah. Okay. But then when I started smoking weed and you know doing art and writing poems and playing the guitar by myself and not hurting a soul, I felt like I had to like I'm. It was the same as being a heroin addict or something where I had to hide it. I knew that people would be upset with me if they found out. Right. And over the years, I just stopped having relationships with people who didn't smoke because I didn't feel like they could understand. Come up just a couple, yeah. six inches to the mic. Ooh. Yeah. So I don't know if that was your experience at all. I love that I don't have to switch the cameras this way. Oh, yeah. This is cool. I like yeah. it too. I, well, I would say I don't, I don't have that shared experience, I guess. Um, but... Um, how could I say this? Nobody ever judged you harshly for smoking weed? When I started to become more, stepping more towards these other roles in like, um, in my work, working life, you know, because before I was a short order cook, worked at a casino, you know, whatnot, nobody didn't really care then. Okay. But then the minute that, you know, I stepped into working with the, the youth and are working in the school system. Mm hmm um then because it was illegal was the whole that's why i hit it i knew that a lot of my co-workers knew that i smoked because it's 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 small community you know mm -hmm. it's small community even though we're all spread out far away from each other it's still we all still know each other you know and um i i a lot of it was just due to the fact that it was um illegal through the law i didn't really feel any of the, the direct shame knowing that there was a, a, a either an older person person of the same age or whatever looking down on me saying why does he work for this institution or that institution and then he still smokes weed um but well do you uh, do you think anybody ever thought you were a bad dad because you're a pot smoker or that kind of thing mm. what family members did you have any elders who were he's on drugs no, well you know not really not not really a lot of my a lot of my family they're all smokers okay uh, they are and then the ones that 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 are not smokers they really don't share like strong opinions of like oh he shouldn't be doing that or any i've never heard any of that um, it's just a topic my family never talks about yeah like you you'd have to be stupid not to assume i oh does my son the skinny long-haired artist musician guy with puppets and does he smoke hmm, i can't tell i think he might be straight laced he's you know? a puppeteer yeah i just look like a stoner you know <laughs> righteous yeah so yeah this, these are two different shared experiences of yeah. two potheads yeah you know and it's, it's it's damn interesting because where you experience shame and and uh just downright like almost kind of like fuck off mike i i have experienced um the complete polar opposite um 
And so there was a few times, I'm going to say this, where there was a, there was a, a individual, an older lady that asked me one time, ain't I supposed to be something in the community? Yeah. Um, and why are you, um, out at the bars and, you know, right. and in doing, and in doing this and in, and all of these other things. And yeah, I, I kind of asked her, I said, what do you, what do you mean? Am I supposed to be something in the community? Um, it's supposed to be an example. A yeah. Leader. Yeah. A leader, an example. Yeah. And, um, that at that point in time, I was kind of offended by it, but it kind of has sat with me out throughout the years, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so it is kind of going back to what you were experiencing because, you know, I would sit there and I would be like, okay, well, she's kind of right. You know, if you're going to be in this role, you shouldn't be publicly out there, mm -hmm. you know? But then where does that put somebody that puts somebody at their house doing it alone or, you know, right. they, yeah. yeah, you know, so, um, then you go to yourself, well, then don't get those kind of jobs, right? Just go get a job where you're just like everyone else, you know, and, um, it's not the, it doesn't have the job title of, you know, Hey, you shouldn't be in the bar. Hey, you shouldn't be bowling up, mm -hmm. you know, and then, and then just leave it at that. And then that's basically kind of like where I'm at right now. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I, you know, before I got the tribal college job, uh, yeah. it was the first time I knew I was going to be tested for weed and I needed that job bad. Yeah. And so I tried to quit. I mean, I did quit for a couple of weeks and then the night before I couldn't not smoke. Right. So I smoked up and I showed up the first day and they just never tested me. At the time, people, you know, fucking lazy, the tribal colleges, they didn't get around to it. So I could keep it. Right. Next job they was. I didn't suspect it. No, they wouldn't have suspected it because I looked totally professional. And, yeah. you know, I mean, I sold myself. I had a whole persona to try to steer people away from the idea. I was like, is that guy just a lazy stoner? You know? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I love about not having a job anymore and doing this instead. <laughs> I can just be myself and not apologize, you know? Yeah. Nobody can fire me from my own YouTube channel. That sounds like some end of some really cool fucking movie. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you just said. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> Shit. Shit. I don't have to apologize to anybody. <laughs> Maybe that's a good note to end on then. Yeah. Okay, this is old, long enough. This has been this episode of Quitting Weed. I am Michael Lyons. Hey, Breaky Graves. And I will see you again. Do you remember how to say it? In a, yeah. Banama. Gigawabamin Minua. Don't go away. I'm begging you to stay. Cause I'm gonna miss your love. <laughs> Please don't go. Oh, really? Why? Because I'm going to miss your love. <laughs> the minute you, you walk, walk out, out that, that door. door. But I got to go to work, honey. No, <laughs> I'm going to miss your love the minute you walk out that door. <laughs> hey, everybody. Okay, hey. Won't you consider becoming a patron? Patron? No, that's not right. Um, patron. Yeah. I can't even say it. <laughs> Please become a patron saint and support Bushu Nana Bushu, the podcast about Ojibwe language and culture. Click the links in the description to our Patreon page. And if you become a $25 a month Bushu crew member, it's an exclusive club. <laughs> it's going to cost you some junior some <laughs> no. money. <laughs> no. uh, you'll get a, a cup, a coffee cup. Oh, you can oh. put your black medicine water in there. <laughs> Muckade bush kiki wabu. Muckade bush kiki. See, you're already learning it, Jibway. <laughs> Buju crew members get $25 a month and we'll send you a... Uh, Makade Mushkiki Wabu cup, <laughs> a coffee cup with our pictures on it. And, uh, 
or just check out our Patreon page. You don't have to sign up. You can see some of these Lydia, some of these videos. This one's backstage of the show. There's Michael and Nana Bushu. My mouth wide open. This one's called How's the Historical Trauma Today? <laughs> okay, let's just <laughs> check this out. <laughs> Yeah, I need to get my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, good morning. Mino Giga Jabe. Today is a jib boy phrase of the day. Mino Giga Jabe. Let's see. <laughs> Michael. <laughs> A rock star cartoonist. Well, I think you get the picture. Um, yeah. Come on over to our Patreon page. I don't know what else to say. Miigwechka, Biz and Thank you for listening. And I will see you again. Giga wabba min. Minowa.